Good afternoon, this is Remy Porter. I'm going to uh, discuss a little bit of my approach to delivering a presentation. And my focus is going to be on the how-to element of presentations, presentations that are meant to teach someone how to accomplish some task. I refer to them as technical presentations because you're communicating a technique to an audience. In this case, the technique is going to be how do I do this sort of presentation? Um, and we're going to kind of analyze this presentation as we go through. So hopefully we're going to have a feel for some good techniques for building and demonstrating a presentation like this. You're going to see a lot of slides that look like this as we go through. Well, not very many, but this right here, kind of an analysis slide. We're entering the exposition phase of my presentation. And as we go through the presentation, I want to call your attention to that because we're going to discuss the role of these different sections. Before we get into that, though, I really want to establish a couple things. There's no right or wrong way to give a presentation. A right way to give a presentation is to have an audience that's receptive to what you've just demonstrated, that they understand it, and that they leave the room feeling like they've learned something. However you achieve that is going to be successful. That's a good presentation. The end result is what makes it good, not how you get there. But at the same time, there are a few things to keep in mind. There are definitely some things that are probably not going to be successful, and there are other things that probably will be successful. So what we want to do is we want to look at what makes a presentation effective and how we can make our own presentations effective. I am not the best presenter that's ever presented. I, I am a competent presenter. I have some techniques that work very well. I have a lot of experience presenting. I used to do training for a number of years. Um, but this, this isn't, you know, I'm so great. I make a lot of mistakes and there are a lot of things that, you know, I look back at my presentations and I'm like, I can't believe I did that. We're not about rules or guidelines or even saying this template is the template you really need to follow. That's not the purpose here. What we really want to do is give you an example of how you can deliver an effective presentation, how you can structure content, how you can explain things. Um, that's going to be our focus. So nothing's a rule, nothing's written in stone. These are all good ideas. I'm not a great presenter. If you want to see a great presenter, I've included a couple links here and, and they'll be in the YouTube um, description as well. Hans Rosling, hands down, is the best presenter I have ever seen. He does a lot of talks for TED about um, what is a very dry subject, global statistics, global demographics, and income statistics. And, all sorts of things like that. Very dry subject. You will never be bored for one minute during one of his presentations. He is a fantastic presenter, and uh, I'm always blown away. Every time I see him do something new, it's, it's incredible. So I've included some links. I'm not gonna, gonna cut over to one of his videos right now. I just wanted to include that as something to keep in mind. But our goal, we we're gonna make a presentation. So what do we need to do? We need to communicate some piece of content. We have some idea, especially when we're talking about a technical presentation, you have some idea of what it is you're trying to teach people. There's some very clear thesis here. You have an idea, you have a problem. This idea solves that problem. So we have this piece of content and that's really going to form the foundation of our presentation. We have to take this idea and we have to wrap some sort of structure around it some sort of, of structure that's going to allow us to communicate it. And then the actual act of communicating it, using that structure to build our presentation. This is a very good little pyramid model of how a, a presentation can work. I do want to point out, though, that we can flip this around. The foundation of a presentation could be your content, or it could be your presentation skills. If you've done a lot of presentations, I've done a lot of presentations, I've got a really good feel for how to pace them and how to structure them. My presentation skills kind of form the, the foundation and they support, in the end, the content I'm trying to communicate. Doesn't really matter. Both of these perspectives are entirely accurate. We have these three pieces. They all kind of end up supporting each other. Note, though, structure is always going to be in the middle. As a result, it sort of becomes the most important part. It's not the foundation. We have either presentation skills or content, but structure is going to be the glue that actually holds it together. We're going to spend a lot of time on the structure, but before we get into that, we have to have good content. 
And this is really focused for technical presentations, but I think if you're going to put together any other sort of presentation, you're going to see the same sort of, of ideas are important. The most important thing, I'm going to skip right to the bottom here, the most important thing, if you are going to deliver a presentation to an audience, the most important thing is that it is an interesting subject to you. Most critical piece. Everything else, picking, picking something that is at least applicable that your, your audience can use, that's complex enough that they couldn't just figure it out on their own, that's important. That's, that's what drives the value. Something for a technical presentation, there has to be a how-to element. It's got to be some tool or technique they can use. I've done a lot of presentations on design patterns for programming, for using uh, the Microsoft.NET Entity Framework, for um, uh, using work items inside of, of TFS, our source control system, a lot, a lot of technical subjects. They're all very much built around some way of doing things. Gives you a good foundation. I really want to point out that most important piece. Again, you notice I keep repeating myself on this, but this is so important. You have to care about the presentation. So many presentations I see are ones that are, are delivered by rote. I have to give a presentation about this topic. I need to express this. And that's fine, but a lot of times it ends up being very dry and very boring. Here's a list of, of things. A good presentation is founded on your personal interest in the subject. So, okay, we find it's a topic. It's an interesting topic to us. We think it has value to our audience. We think people will be interested in it. How are we going to communicate this information? And this is where structure comes into play. The biggest enemy you have to a well-structured presentation is PowerPoint. And this isn't just PowerPoint. This is OpenOffice. This is Keynote. All of the presentation tools are horrible. They are absolutely terrible for making a good presentation. And I say this even as I'm using one to record this presentation. But the reason that they're bad is because of this outline structure that they all enforce. All of them are built around an outline. You have a tree. You have your presentation. You have a topic under your presentation. That topic, you have several slides that are going to express that topic. On each slide, you're going to have bullet points. On each of those bullet points, you can have sub-bullet points and sub-sub-bullet points. And you can build this whole tree outline and get as detailed as you want and drill down. It's a tree structure. It's a great way to get your ideas on paper. It's a great way to understand how they're organized. Mind mapping is a very popular way to kind of understand a subject. They are a great tool for organizing your thoughts but they're a terrible way to communicate information. It turns everything into a list. I have a list of topics. Under each topic, I have a list of slides. Under each slide, I have a list of points. It's lists, and lists are just so boring. You're also getting this nesting thing. You're doing kind of this depth-first traversal. I go into topic one. I go to slide one. I go to bullet point one. I go to sub point one, two, three, four. Bullet two, sub bullet two, one, two, three. That nesting it really is hard to follow what's going on. It's hard to see the point and, and the entire goal of the presentation. So I want to break out of that. And, and the biggest idea I have for doing that, how are we going to do this? How are we going to keep the audience involved? We're going to tell them a story. We're not going to list off things. We're going to avoid lists as much as possible. We're going to tell a story. So what are the parts of a story? How do we tell a story? There are two major elements to a story. There's how the story flows and progresses, and there's the style of the story, how it's communicated. For the style, this is a little, little softer, a little more touchy-feely, things like tone. There's really no good way to, to, to say exactly what the tone of a certain story is, but it's the general feel. If I'm cracking jokes and I'm talking about how somebody died, that's a, that's a conflict in tone. That's not really appropriate. Tone's going to be the way you communicate, the, the, the spirit of your communication. The setting, skipping ahead a little bit, the setting is going to be what the scope of the topic is. And in this case, you know, I'm talking about presentations. That's our settings. It's the whole idea of communicating to an audience. Theme is one of those things about stories that I think English teachers have done a terrible job uh, communicating to their students. The theme of the story is not what the story is about. It's not um, kind of the spirit of the story. It is why the story matters to the audience. 
in this case, the theme is, is we're talking about how to present. The theme, why this matters to you, is that this is a useful set of communication skills. That's why you should pay attention. That's why you're watching this. On the flip side, there's the flow, the actual mechanical structure of a story. We're going to focus a lot more on that. The style and the, the, all of those elements, that's something that you kind of express yourself through. There's no rules. There's no hard and fast structure to how you're going to approach those. We're going to focus more on the mechanical side. How do you put a story together mechanically? And it's those four pieces there that you see listed off under flow. What are the mechanics of a story? The exposition is where you start. Every story has a beginning. We introduce the characters, we introduce what the conflict is, we give the audience an understanding of what our story is going to be about. I'm going to come back to Star Wars a lot for my examples because Star Wars is a very simple story that is told extremely well. If you can structure your presentations like Star Wars every time, I promise you, they will be a successful presentation. Once we've done that establishing, we start escalating. We add complications. We are going to make the story bigger and bigger and bigger. The conflict gets bigger, the challenges get bigger, our protagonists, our main characters, they defeat those challenges in an, in an ever-escalating path. All of this builds up to the climax, and I'm so sorry for using this picture for climax. I, anyway, all of this builds up to the climax. We keep taking the story, we keep making it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, and then we get to the climax. Everything comes together. This is the big explosive moment in the story. This is the, the huge moment that everybody's going to remember. We hit that point, and then immediately we go down to the resolution. And I felt so guilty about the last picture. I didn't include one here. Um, all of a sudden, we've now hit the climax. We've resolved the conflict. We've shown how our big idea, how our main character, can defeat the problem, our antagonist, the bad guy. And now we establish a new status quo. Now that you know this, here's the environment you're in. We can also go back and show how we got here. What was the path to get to this point? Things like that. The resolution is kind of our summary. The important idea, when I'm trying to describe this as a storytelling process, is you know our outline, it's that tree structure. We have this list of things. When we communicate via narrative, we're drawing a line. We have a beginning, we have an end, we have a few plot points in between those two. And so we just draw a line to connect those dots. We go from point A to point B to point C to the end. That linear path makes it a lot easier for your audience to figure out where we are in the story, at what points they need to really pay attention versus what parts they might not be as interested in. So that was my exposition. I've just introduced all of the big ideas. Everything we're going to talk about in the next few minutes has all been introduced. You see everything you need to know right there. So now I need to start escalating the conflict. Our problem is going to be how we communicate a presentation. Our idea is this storytelling model. So now I need to start escalating that conflict. Part of this is going to be by adding more details. So the first detail what is the role of the exposition? Well, one of the key roles is to get the audience's attention. And I have these two rules of thumb here for getting the audience's attention. You have either five slides or two minutes, whichever comes first, to get the audience's attention. If you don't have their attention within that moment, you're not going to get their attention. The presentation is over. You can pack up. You can go home. They're not going to get anything out of your presentation. Those are the most important moments. So you want to get to the point very quickly and let the audience know what they're going to be in for. In addition to getting their attention, this is also that point where you, you kind of set some of those more, more touchy-feely things, tone, setting, theme. This is where you establish how you're going to communicate, the general environment you're communicating, and why the audience should care. You need to establish that during the exposition. Not necessarily in your first five slides, but once you've got their attention, you need to lay these things out so that they know what they're in for. The most important thing you're going to do, though, especially for a technical presentation, is establish your characters. Who are the good guys? Who is your big idea that you're trying to promote? Who are the bad guys? What problem does it solve? 
we need to establish that as quickly as we can so that the audience knows how the story is going to progress. They should be a step ahead of us as we're going. And keeping with this whole Star Wars theme, when you think about exposition, I want you to think about the opening minute of Star Wars. You skip past the title crawl, you got that, that long block of text. Ignore that. The first thing you see when the movie actually starts is this tiny little starship running away from this gigantic, massive starship. And they're shooting at each other, and little ships shooting green bolts, and big ships shooting red bolts. And right there, in that one long shot, you now know everything you need to know about the movie. Everything's been established. Who are the good guys? Well, the people in that little ship. How do we know they're good guys? Because of the color choice. Green versus red. We know that green are the good guys, red are the bad guys. We know how strong the good guys are. Not very, compared to the bad guys who have this giant ship. We know that there's a military conflict. Everything we need to know about the story is established right there. From that point forward, it's all about adding details and escalating the conflict. And when we're talking about getting the audience's attention, one of the quickest ways to lose it is to have an agenda slide where you list off topics. It's boring. Lists are boring. There's no way to make a list interesting. So avoid listing things off. Just go right in. I'm going to tell you a story. The story picks up with this main character. He's doing this right now. Let's go and see what happens. That is the best way to build your presentation. Once we've established all of that, and once we've gotten past this whole idea of we need to list out and, and kind of do this info dump, now we can get into escalating the conflict. Our protagonist, our big idea, is going to try and solve the problem. Gets into this whole protagonist versus antagonist. We have to present the initial problem, have our protagonist try and solve it. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. But then a complication appears. It gets a little more complex, and now the protagonist has to work a little harder. He has to solve a slightly different problem. And so on. we keep building up, adding these sorts of things, and sticking with Star Wars. There's a series of problems that the main characters need to, to, to deal with as they go through the story. If I were talking about a technical subject, like .NET Entity Framework, I've been working with this a lot lately, so it's on my mind. The Entity Framework is a tool for building data access layers. So right there, I've established the idea, the protagonist, Entity Framework, and the problem, data access layers, getting data out of a database and into your application. Now I'm going to show you, well, here's the simple case. Here's you know, my quick path to building an Entity Framework-based application. And I would do a demo, maybe, and I would, I would walk you through some of the configuration screens. And then I'd show you, hey, look, this much works. but We've solved the initial problem. We've gotten off of Tatooine, but now we've gotten trapped on the Death Star because I've shown you this much, but now there's this new problem, this new challenge that we have to deal with. And I keep adding those sorts of complications. Structure your presentations around that. It's a great way to first off build tension. The idea seems more and more compelling as you see it overcome a series of more and more complex challenges. But it's also a great way to build up the audience. Because they don't really know this subject yet. They don't know that much about it. You're giving the presentation. So you need to start simple and get a little more complex. You can build off of what you establish. Same thing with Star Wars. We don't know that universe. First time anybody saw Star Wars, they had no idea who any of these characters were, who the Empire was. They didn't know any of that. So the movie gradually introduced more detail. It added more and more little bits to the conflict so that we could have this big moment, this climax. We establish all of these little details. We add all these little conflicts, and we build up the story to get to the climax. The important thing about a climax, especially for a technical presentation, is that idea of Chekhov's gun. If you see a gun on stage in the first act, it better go off by the third. We've established a whole bunch of things through the exposition and escalation. We've said, this is my idea. This is how you can use it. This is what sort of problems it solves. When the problem turns into this problem, we do this. And so on. We've added all of these details. So this is the point where we now say, take all of these details, put them together. Take all of the biggest parts of the problem, put them together. Now let's see what happens when we get these guys into a conflict. 
Everything we've established so far gets used, and this is a great time for your big demo. In a complex technical presentation, you'll probably do a series of demos as you're going through. This is the big one. This is the moment that your audience should remember. If you think about Star Wars again, we're talking about that trench run. This is the, that's the big moment. This is the big action sequence. This is where all the things we established, getting the plans, and getting you know, Han Solo to be less of a, a rogue so he can come in and save the day at the end. All of these things, the force, they all come together in this one climactic moment. So when you're structuring your presentation, you have to look at your idea. You have to look at the problem that it solves, and you have to say, hey, this is, this is the demo. This is how I can put it all together. In a lot of cases, it's actually really good to start there. Figure out what your climax is going to be. Figure out what matters about this presentation, what matters about this big idea. Build your climax and work backwards. Once we've done that, we now get into the resolution. This isn't the review. A lot of people talk about, you know, you should review at the end of the presentation, and I would recommend avoiding that. We want to resolve the conflict. We hit the climax. We demonstrate here's how our idea solves our problem. Now, what comes out of that? Well, we go from the problem solver to the solution. If in the exposition we have a lawless western town and we introduce Clint Eastwood coming into town, we know in the exposition that Clint Eastwood is going to somehow solve this problem. On the flip side, a little, a little more, more cultured, you have a character like uh, Poirot, mystery solver. At the beginning, in the exposition, we establish a murder has occurred. And now Poirot gathers all of his evidence and builds his case. In the climax, he points out the butler did it. In the resolution, we now show how we reached that conclusion. How do we know the butler did it? Well, here's where I explain how I solved the mystery and all of the pieces fit together. Think about that. When you're building your, your resolution for a technical presentation, think about it like a character in a mystery story. You've solved the mystery, but now you have to explain how you solved it. Show that it all fits together. There's a lot, especially with a technical subject, there's going to be a lot of moving parts, especially if you're solving more, you know, a non-trivial sort of problem, which you should be. Whatever problem you're solving, this has to be non-trivial. Otherwise, why are you talking about it? So there's going to be a lot of moving parts. Show how they fit together. Even if you've already talked about it, this is a good time to remind the audience piece A touches piece B, which touches piece C, and that's how we get from A to C. Connect those dots one last time to show how it all fits together. But don't review. Remember, lists are bad. So don't, don't say, so we talked about X, we talked about Y, etc. Don't do that. Talk about, we started at A. We had to get to D, and in order to do that, we had to go through these, these steps. All these things fit together. That's how I was able to do this. The resolution summarizes your, your conflict. It talks about how you got here. It wraps up all the loose plot threads. But for a really good presentation, don't wrap it up too neatly. If you're putting together a 45-minute presentation, there's no way you can cover the subject in any real depth. You just can't. So make sure your resolution leaves out a couple of little hooks. If you think about the end of Star Wars, what do we have? Well, everybody's celebrating. They've blown up the Death Star. The rebels have saved the day. But Darth Vader's out floating in space. He's still out there. Um, Han Solo still, you know, he started owing money to Jabba the Hutt, and he still owes money to Jabba the Hutt. These are things that we can come back to later. If the audience wants to investigate on their own, that gives them an idea of where to start. So these are the sorts of things you want to do when you're, you're building your presentation. You've got this whole structure. Exposition, show, introduce me to the concepts. Escalation, keep adding more detail. Focus on the conflict. You have an idea and a problem, and the idea solves the problem this way, but then the problem responds by getting a little more complex, and now the idea has to get more complex. You build up until you can show the audience, here is a finished example, non-trivial finished example that does everything I've talked about so far. And those things that I talked about fit together this way, and we resolve all of that and explain 
how we can apply this. This is the new status quo. This is how it all fits together. This is where you can start investigating on your own. That is how you structure a presentation. And it's a very effective way. I've had nothing but, but good luck establishing a presentation that way. But that's not everything. We've got the structure, right? We've picked content, we've built structure, but now we need to actually do the act of communicating that presentation. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this because a lot of this gets into basic public speaking and I'm not, I'm not gonna, gonna cover that for this presentation. But there are a few important things to keep in mind when you're building a presentation. This is a very functional thing. It's not meant to be terribly artistic. So get to the point right off the bat, as quickly as possible, get to the point. What the heck are you talking about? Get to demos. Get straight to showing people this is how it works. This is how you do it. And make sure you get as quickly as possible to questions. Keep the audience involved. Keep the audience engaged. They are part of your presentation. When we talk about getting to the point, don't waste the audience's time. This, this is the most, I keep, I'm going to say this a bunch of times, this is the most important, this is the most important, but there are a lot of important things. Not wasting the audience's time, though, is so vital because it's a sign of respect. The audience is there to listen to you. They are giving you the courtesy of their attention and their time. Their time is valuable, so don't waste it. Get to the point make sure you establish why and how this is going to be valuable to them. And don't get too hung up on the slides. They are visual aids. They help your presentation. They are not your presentation. As PowerPoint refers to its files as PowerPoint presentations and keynote presentations and presentations in Google Docs and all that, they are not presentations. They are slide decks. You are the presentation. What you say, what you do, what you demo, these are the presentation. The slide deck is just there to give you a little help. It's to show something visual. It's to be pictures. And that's really important. Visuals are absolutely vital. It's a visual aid, so use visuals. You notice I've used a lot of clip art and a lot of pictures. I haven't used a lot of diagrams here because it's not the sort of subject that, that really supports diagrams. At the same time, visuals are absolutely vital. So stick to that. Keep a lot of visuals. Take screenshots. If you're showing somebody how to do something, use screenshots or photographs. Show them how it's done. And for the love of God, use demos. Demos are the most perfect way to sum up and show somebody a complex idea. When we're talking about visual aids, they have, they're visual, and that means how they look matters. Use the templates. You, know, you don't have to start from scratch and, and pick out how it's going to look. Use templates to make them appear nice, but also keep in mind that they're not going to do all of the work for you. They don't tell you what to put on the slides. And something you're going to notice from my slides is I don't put a lot on any slide. I like to keep it simple. That is really important for a presentation. Keep your slides as simple as you can. Let the slides have a lot of empty space on them. You don't have to fill a slide. To the contrary, you don't want to fill a slide. You want as much empty space on each slide as possible. Use more slides. My presentations, I use like 80 slides. I, I use a lot of slides in a presentation. Slides are free. They don't cost you anything. So use a slide, put as little text on it as possible, go straight to the next slide. The other thing to keep in mind, though, You've got your slide deck, but what happens if the computer crashes? What happens if there's no projector? How are you going to present this presentation? It doesn't matter. The slide deck is a visual aid. It only is there to help. It is not there to do the job for you. You should be able to present without your slides. In fact, even if you have your slides, your presentation should get the sense that you're presenting without slides. Focus is on you, not on the screen. Part of that, keeping your slides simple, your slides should not be more interesting than you are. If a PowerPoint slideshow can be more interesting than you are, maybe you should not be giving that presentation. You are the point of interest. Everything should be focused in on you. Use the slides as a bit of a backdrop. So, okay, we build a slide deck. We've got this nice, clean, very simple slide deck. We're going to go through whack, 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 whack. 
got all of our different parts of our presentation. How do we run this, this show? Well, first thing, your audience knows how to read. This is a rule. I, you know, like I said, I lied. There are lots of rules. One of the rules, do not read your slides to your audience. Don't do that. Ever. Your audience knows how to read. Some of the text on your slide and some of the text you're going to say, they can be the same thing. But don't read your slides aloud. If you need something to read, use notes. I, I, I like to improv. I'm very much improvisational for my presentations. I kind of just rehearse so that I know what I'm going to say. Don't read your slides aloud. Use notes. If you need something to read, use notes. It is so terrible to have somebody read to you. It, it, it's just awful. And you're giving a presentation. There are important things about public speaking. Project, speak from your diaphragm, reach the back of the room. Even if you're using a microphone, you still want to use good breath control, all of that stuff. Stand up straight, have good posture, hold still, don't dance around on stage, try not to pace, all of those sorts of things. They apply. There are so many other people that have talked about this. I don't want to, want to get too hung up on that. Good public speaking is a cornerstone of your presentation. Once we've got the structure, once we've got the slide deck, public speaking techniques are absolutely vital, and they sort of drive everything. I'm not going to talk about them anymore, though. The other thing I do want to talk about, though, are the cheap psychological tricks that I like to use to manipulate people. It, it's not fair. Um, it's somewhat cynical. But kind of like a stage magician, a few little things about how, how the human brain works and how people approach things allow you to kind of get the audience involved without explicitly uh, letting them know that you're doing that. A couple things, though, to, to warn you about. First off, humans, they get bored very quickly, and they'll stay bored once you make them bored. If you lose your audience, they are gone. You're not going to get them back. So how do we keep them involved? Well, one of the great ways to do this is unexpected connections. The human brain is a powerful relational engine. Uh, the entire creativity of the human brain is that we can take something that is unrelated to something else and find a connection that people don't expect. That's, that's the cornerstone of comedy. That's what pretty much every joke ever told is. I'm going to set up a situation, and when I resolve it, I resolve it in a way that's completely unexpected. Those, those connections help keep a presentation memorable. Why am I using Star Wars? Well, Star Wars is a good illustration, but it's also an unexpected connection. Nobody thinks PowerPoint slideshow, Star Wars. That's not something people expect. So by using something like that, I have this really nice, memorable presentation built around an unexpected connection. Part of my not putting a lot on my slides is it means I'm changing slides more frequently. And changing slides frequently draws the eye back to you, back to the stage, because it's change. Change is something that we're attracted to. We pay attention to it. It keeps our minds engaged. The other thing to keep in mind, why do we structure our presentation around this narrative structure? Because that is what we are accultured to. We, we, we know stories. We all love stories. Everybody, I don't care who you are. Everybody loves stories. Even if you don't like Star Wars, there's some story that you like. And all stories follow this basic narrative structure in some fashion. Some don't. Some great literature doesn't. But for the most part, for most stories, for most presentations, following this pattern is going to be a great way to communicate that and hold the audience's attention. Reinforcement is also absolutely vital for your presentation. That's that whole, there are three different kinds of learner stuff. Show them something, say something, do something. Give them a hands-on, give them some sort of tactical, tactile experience uh, for how it's going to work. The more different ways you engage people, showing them text, showing them pictures, saying words, explaining things verbally, the more engaged your audience is going to be. I'm not a big fan of the whole idea that some people are visual learners and some people are audio, audio learners and so on. But regardless of how you feel about that, showing people multiple ways of uh, you know, using all of these different media is going to work better. 
regardless, even if somebody's a visual learner, showing it and saying it's better than just showing it. When we're talking about reinforcement, repetition is also really important. And I should have put in like four or five of these slides, but I didn't. Repeating the same ideas again and again, reinforcing, and that's part of the job of the resolution. Even if you're just doing a traditional review, what are you doing? You're repeating something. You come back to the same ideas again and again. It gets it lodged into people's memories three or four times. Say the same thing, they're going to remember it. Say it a little differently each time. Those sorts of things are how you can kind of drive the memory of a presentation. Avoid nesting topics. You really don't want to get back into the outline mode. Everything you do, when you're, when you're using PowerPoint to sketch out a presentation, everything you do is going to drive you back to a nested presentation, to this tree structure. Avoid it. Focus on the line. How do I go from point A to point B in the straightest line that I can? Which brings us, in my presentation, to what would be the climax. I don't have anything to demo for you. This is my demo. But this is where all of those big ideas come together. This is the big moment that I'm going to show you all the important things we've talked about, how they all work together. And I've been doing that through the whole presentation, hopefully. So, ta-da, climax, and now resolution. So we've hit the big moment in the presentation. We've hit the big set piece, the memory moment. I just did a song and dance. You didn't see it, but I did. So now we come into the resolution, and here in the resolution, what are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about what are our moving parts. We're telling a story here. So our key moving parts are that structure of a story. Once we have that structure, we now have our presentation, how we're going to show it to people, what visuals we use, all of the techniques we're going to use to visually communicate that using a slide deck. It's a good place to prove my point, and hopefully, if everything has gone well, this presentation is its own proof. Hopefully you've found it valuable, hopefully you've found this a great way to, to learn a little bit about presenting. Let me know if you did, let me know if you didn't. Uh, my, my email will be at the end of this slideshow here. There's also plenty of room for hooks for other future discussions. I focused very much on a technical presentation. A lot of what I talked about, if you're doing a persuasive presentation, same sort of thing applies. One of the biggest challenges, one of the hardest types of presentations is that project status presentation or the quarterly meeting presentation where you have to talk about this list of things that's really boring because it's a list and lists are boring. But also, I didn't really talk about public speaking techniques very much. I didn't talk about how to use your voice, how to use your body, how to use your posture, and that's really important stuff. That is, that is absolutely vital to delivering a presentation well. I didn't cover any of that. So there's, there's other stuff here to investigate on your own if you really want to kick your presentation skills up and really improve how you communicate. These are all things that you can keep in mind. And finally, Really engage the audience. Make sure you leave room for questions. Um, I've uploaded these slides to that link that you see at the bottom. You can see my emails attached here. I will include this in uh, the YouTube description when I get this uploaded. This is uh, all the things that you need to know to kind of structure a compelling presentation. So thank you for your time. Hopefully I did not uh, bore anyone. This was a little bit on the long side, I know. Um, let me know if you have any questions. You can also find me on Google Plus under Remy Porter. Um, I look forward to hearing from people. Thank you very much.